I heard you talking about protein, and I think this is an interesting one because yeah. I, I think we all use, we see the word protein and we think it's a thing, but um, it, it's not. There's, there's, it's quite complex. So, how would you um, how would you define protein, and um, you know what? You know, what, 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 what's in it yep. that, that, that you could then sort of break Certainly. out and, and explain? Yeah. So I would define protein as it relates to dietary protein. Uh, it consists of 20 amino acids. Nine are essential, and the meaning you must get them from the diet, and the others are non-essential. Your body can generate them. We don't actually eat for dietary protein. We eat for those essential amino acids, and those essential amino acids are necessary for survival. One way to think about it is understanding that there's protein, you know, in the foods that you eat, foods that contain protein, they typically have all the amino acids, but some, not, that's not entirely true, right? So grains are deficient in, you know, sometimes limiting in lysine and methionine. So vegetables can be limiting in methionine. So there are limiting amino acids. And actually every food uh, protein source has some kind of limiting amino acid, meaning it's, you know, in the lowest amount. In terms of nutrition and dietary protein, when we eat high quality proteins that are animal based, that's not an issue. We don't really need to worry about that because animals make the correct amino acid ratio for animals. So skeletal muscle of a steak would nearly match skeletal muscle of a human. And again, it's those amino acids that we need. Okay. And plant, plant structure make the correct amino, have the correct amino acid ratio for plants. So what makes the correct ratio then for humans? So for, from my perspective, it's all about muscle health. Okay. And when we think about muscle health, my number one limiting amino acid is leucine. Okay. And we eat for all the you know, essential amino acids, but you, when you solve for muscle, everything else falls into place. Okay. When you solve for that amino acid leucine, everything else falls into place. And no, you cannot have a leucine on its own. People will then ask, well, can I Yeah, I was going to say that. Can you supplement? Um... I wouldn't recommend it because of the, the way in which um, the amino acids are utilized. There's leucine, isoleucine, and valine are the other branch chain amino acids, and they all must be uh, taken up in a ratio because just the way in which the metabolism goes. Right. So, so even though protein is kind of... Um is broken down into these different amino acids you you couldn't um you, you couldn't supplement those effectively you wouldn't want to you wouldn't because okay. they, they do exist in ratios and again it's hitting that threshold so if an individual is um plant-based they need to make sure that if they hit that two and a half grams of leucine then they'll hit that amino acid typically that amino acid ratio that's great for everything else okay. again if you focus on meeting the needs of protein first then you are not going to be in need for the rest of your body, which is very interesting. For example, arginine. Arginine is a precursor for NO2, which is a vasodilator, nitric oxide. It's one way in which potentially lower protein diets when you increase protein can help with blood pressure. Hmm. Again, we don't eat for uh, protein. We eat for those 20 amino acids or essentially nine amino acids. What about branch chain okay. amino acids then? What, what are they and do they play a part in any of this at yeah. all? Well, branch chain amino acids, and that's just referring to um, the, the, the side group of the amino acid, which is, you know, branch chain, and that's leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Leucine is the branch chain amino acid that's necessary for muscle stimulation. And typically, they're found in all high-quality proteins, whether it's egg, whey, uh, animal-based products, fish. But you, you wouldn't do like a, you wouldn't you could. have, oh, you could. You absolutely could. Okay. So if an individual is plant-based, they could do five, a uh, five gram, you know, five gram scoop of branched chain amino acids or making sure that they're getting two and a half grams of leucine and then the other amino acids. So in a two to one to one ratio, leucine, isoleucine and valine, and it'll be in the, on the back of the label. Right. But that's one way in which someone could increase the quality of their protein. And there's, there's, there is stuff, again, there's, you know, there's all kinds of stuff you find online, but, the, but there is a link from branch chain amino acids too much to diabetes. Do you, do you know I'm anything so glad you brought that, that up. I do. <laughs> branch chain amino acids do not cause diabetes. When an individual is diabetic or overweight, there's substrate, excess substrate in their bloodstream, whether it's free fatty acids, glucose, or branch chain amino acids. 
brown chain amino acids do not cause diabetes. So it is an issue with the cell in and of itself in excess of everything. Okay. And another person that's, that's quite popular at the moment is, um, you must have heard or seen Liver King, um, where he's... Very... We love the Liver King. <laughs> we, we love, love the Liver King. My husband loves the Liver King. <laughs> now, he talks about eating organs. Where, what's your, you know, where do you... Number I'll... one, I like to cook all my food. <laughs> okay. So you're um, not doing sort of sushi no, with never, brain or never, anything? No, never, never, no. Uh, I think that organs are very nutrient dense. Very nutrient dense. And um, yeah. do you, would, is that something that I, I was thinking of trying? Like I used to, eat, as a kid, I used to eat liver, and I've not had it for years. Uh, it's, it's one of those old-fashioned things. It's an acquired, that, it's an acquired taste. It is, it is quite nice with some with some onions. My my he grandfather said nice. and grandmother yeah, used yeah. to do it, and it and it was it was always quite. A, it certainly filled you up. Yeah. Um, very quickly, but is, is it something that um, you would encourage people to try and put into their diet because it's an effective way of I getting. Would. Yeah, vitamin A and a lot of fat-soluble nutrients, absolutely. Um, one of the things that we do, I'll give you a tip. So I um, use, they're called, have you ever had carnivore crisps? No. Okay, so we use carnivore crisps, and I give this to my what kids. What are they? They're dehydrated liver. Oh, right, okay. And so, try that. so I give, you know, if I give my kids some kind of something crunchy, I'll break some of that up in there or put it in there. They don't know the difference, and it's a way to get it in. Mm. And you don't have to actually eat it or cook it in that way. Okay. So that's what we do. All right. And what what are your thoughts on? I know. Well, I know you've got some views on this, but the there's. Um, I think it was. I think it was started in Singapore where they've got this kind of. Um, uh, a syn- not. I don't know if it's synthetic, but this um, kind of real meat that's been grown. I think. Why got- are we doing that? Why don't we just get better <laughs> at production? You know, why are we doing this? Well, I, I, they, they seem to say that it's uh, a more cost-effective way, although about, it's not how that about cheap. We just, how about we cut back on food excess, cut back on obesity, cut back on food waste, and find smart, intelligent ways to manage the population? Just a thought. Okay. So you're, you're definitely not in the, in the sort of camp of supporting that then? No, <laughs> no. There's got to be... We are, we are a smart world. We need to figure out ways to deal appropriately. You know, I mean, if we are dealing with an incredible explosion of obesity, perhaps that's where we start. Not finding other fake ways to feed people, right? Yeah, it does get a bit weird. I, I, I sort of wonder, you know, it, it, you, you, it probably seems quite safe, but it, it's probably gonna be years before you realize no what idea. happens. We have no idea. <laughs> and also, I, I think that you know, with social media, there's wonderful things to it, but I think that the negative is that we are not, we're almost told what to think instead of doing any kind of free thinking for ourselves, instead of questioning, well, who, where is the profit motive? Why is this happening? How is this even acceptable? Right? Yeah. Well, and, yeah, yeah. And definitely. this becomes a, a, an issue. So now you mean to tell me because we can't manage obesity on our own, because there's a huge division between fitness and muscle-centric medicine and understanding that we have the tools to correct it. We're going to now, it's very short-sighted, we're now going to figure out more ways to produce more food to feed more people when we know that individuals are already overeating. And not only that, we're going to create fake fake meat technology. We are going to fake food. What is the world coming to? (laughs) 